brain of an 8-year-old and the body of a 13-year-old. Well, in the brand new book, The New Puberty, and this is a must-read, a Rodale publication. It's a reassuring, empowering guide for millions of parents. And those of you listening right now, whether you're a parent, a grandparent, a teacher, a coach, a, a pediatrician, all family members, I want you to take note of our two very special, notable experts in this field, Drs. Louise Greenspan and Juliana Deerdorf who offer practical strategies for supporting girls entering this complex stage of their lives. To both of you, welcome to the Midday Magazine. Nice to have you. Thanks for having us. You betcha. And now, who am I speaking with first? <laughs> is this is Louise Greenspan. I'm the pediatric endocrinologist. Nice to have you on. And, uh, doctor, let me ask you, why is there... Uh, an emergence of girls entering puberty at a younger age than uh, than perhaps others did generations ago? So that's a good question, and, and let me start by just making sure that your audience understands the definition that, that we're using for puberty and that other uh, scientists and pediatricians use. I think a lot of people who aren't doctors, when they hear the word puberty, they think, oh, girls, periods. And what we're talking about is the process that starts two to three or maybe four years before that, specifically with breast development and pubic care. And what we're seeing is a significant proportion of seven-year-old girls are having those early signs of pubertal development. And we outline in our book three main culprits that we think may be at, uh, at cause here. Uh, the first is obesity. The second is environmental chemicals or endocrine mimicking chemicals. And the third is the psychosocial and sort of stress environment that the girl may be in at home. This is very interesting. Are these uh, causes that weren't around, let's say, in, uh, in the 70s or 80s? Well, you know, we've seen a, a marked increase in overweight and obesity. There's been a lot of publicity around this lately. And um, so, yeah, we've reached, we've reached a level of uh, body fat in this country that never existed before. Um, the other piece is that there are far more chemicals that girls are exposed to uh, now than in the past. And we don't know much about that toxic soup of various chemicals and how they interact with each other Absolutely. to affect a girl's developing body. Uh, well, please address the stress factor in all of this. I know a lot of parents and grandparents listening right now want to know why their children are so stressed out. Yeah, well, you know, this this has been around for, for a while in terms of various kinds of stressors that kids experience at young ages. Um, and probably isn't the root cause of why puberty is starting earlier, but among girls, it definitely can be a trigger or push girls to start puberty earlier. The types of things that have been identified in the literature are really factors in the early environment when a girl is between um, zero and seven years old that uh, are disruptive or inconsistent, particularly in terms of the family environment and um, parenting. So we know that girls whose parents are more connected emotionally and who are warmer in their parenting styles mm -hmm. actually experience puberty at later ages than their, their peers who are growing up in harsher environments. Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing the new puberty, how to navigate early development in today's girls. This is a Rodale publication. Uh, available at your favorite bookstore online. And we welcome uh, Dr. Louise Greenspan, medical uh, doctor, and Juliana Deerdorf, Ph.D., to our program. Um, I know I touched upon it, but um, uh, in, in talking with a couple of folks yesterday about this, one uh, parent said, you know, Phil, I don't know why these kids are heading into bu puberty at such a younger age than, than I did. And uh, I'm saying to them, well, this is what they're going to explain in the new puberty. Are things going to remain like this? Uh, Dr. Louise, perhaps you can uh, identify this question. Well, in terms of the first risk factor, which is obesity, I think we're seeing some positive changes in that direction okay. where obesity rates are beginning to level off. They're not getting less, but they are beginning to level off. Okay. And I think with more education and changes to the school lunch program, and more knowledge, for example, about how sweet drinks, sugar-sweetened drinks like sodas really promote obesity, I'm hoping that we'll see less uh, obese kids, and that itself may well mm -hmm. help 
decrease this. Mm -hmm. I think there's also a much greater awareness of the environmental chemicals that may be predisposing kids to puberty. And I think there's a lot of resources now, including our book and other places like the Environmental Working Group, which also allow parents to be forearmed and know what to avoid. And then in terms of the psychological, Julia, I don't know if you want to speak to that. Yeah, yeah you know, you psychologically, know, uh, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I, I was just wondering, Julia, are there psychological consequences that, that today's, you know, young girls uh, perhaps go through in, in, in this new puberty? That is a great question. So um, the research has confirmed, and this is decades of research, that girls who go through puberty earlier are at higher risk for a multitude of emotional and behavioral um, problems in adolescence, including lower self-esteem, body image issues, um, earlier sexual initiation, uh, experimentation with substances. Um, so they're certainly more at risk, probably because if they're looking older um, than they actually are, they might be getting into situations with older peers that they're not ready for in terms of their brain development, right? And their social maturity isn't quite there. Right. Now, the good news, that all sounds bad, but the good news <laughs> is that context matters. And so if, you're, if you have parents that are doing really strong monitoring who have good communication with their kids, if they're in school contexts that are safe, yep. Um, they're going to do better, yeah. and it can ameliorate a, a lot of that risk. Yeah, but right, this uh, major transition, this is their very first major transition uh, into uh, another uh, level of life. This is where the parent or the caretaker really has to be aware of how to help lead them in this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why in the book we really talk about you know what, when it comes to puberty, you have to have the conversation, not the talk. We always used to talk about having the talk. It's not one talk. It's a conversation that starts very early, at young ages, 8, 9, 10. You've really got to start letting your daughter know, signaling to her, hey, I'm comfortable with this. This is a normal process. Puberty is a normal process. Everyone goes through it, and you can ask me questions, and I'm going to be an involved parent. How awesome. Not the talk, the conversation. Love it. What kind of uh, cutting-edge research and uh, how long did it take you uh, to look at some of these uh, clinical experiences to uh, gather all the information for the new puberty? Well, the first study that Julie and I were involved with is now in its ninth year, and we've been studying 1,200 girls from across the country. We are based at the San Francisco site, so we've been looking at those girls for nine years. But there's lots of other research that we cite in the, uh, in the book, and um, it's, it's great that some of the research is long-term or longitudinal following the same girls through time, and Julie and I are involved in several other studies now. It's a long process to be able to follow these girls, and we really appreciate that they've allowed us to do that. Absolutely. Uh, folks, if you're just joining us, a must read The New Puberty How to Navigate Early Development in Today's Girls. I know we only have a minute left in that time to each of you. What has uh, writing and researching The New Puberty taught you about life, this new level of life? Dr. Louise, you first. Well, Julie and I are both moms of daughters in this age range, so I think it's helped us have a perspective both as moms of daughters and as professionals. I think we see it from both sides, and writing this book really allowed me to develop that knowledge base, but also to, to have that view as a mom as well as a professional. Awesome. Awesome. Lou, and, uh, and I would say... Yes. Yeah, Juliana. Yes. Yeah, I would just say that um, the thing that has really become clear from the research, and uh, not surprising, that parents really matter, and close adults in the in close trusted adults in the girl's life make a huge difference. So being armed with the knowledge is key. Well, making a huge difference is the new puberty. Thank you both for what you have done. This is a terrific manual, and we applaud you both. Thanks for having us. Thank you Thanks so. so much. Thank you so very, very much. Mm -hmm.